Tara, I got to tell you, I am dreading Splody Week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not even Splody Day anymore. It's Splody yeah, no, Week. It's, it's like a month sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, July it's supposed to rain here on Splody Day, so... Good, good. Oh, have, I can only no, hope. No, everyone's going to have leftovers. So they're going to do it for like a month. <sighs> That's true. For those of you who are not in the United States of America and are like, what the fuck are they talking about? It's almost July 4th here, which is one of the two designated days that were the officially designated days that we set off fireworks in the United States of America. Um, however, you know how, how Black Friday has sort of crept over into Thursday and into Wednesday? July 4th has sort of crept over into July, July. 3rd. July, yeah. Um, so fireworks... America. What? Why don't you love America? <sighs> because I have a, we have a dog. That's why. Yeah. And Wait, he... Honey, Peggy and Dottie really don't care too much about the fireworks. Simba, not a fan. No. Same thing with thunderstorms. The girls could give a fuck. Simba gets very nervous. Yeah. Uh, and, like, is glued to my side. And Loki is therapy human. Loki wants to fight the fireworks. So that's going to be fun. Also, we're, we're anticipating stories next week of people doing incredibly stupid things with fireworks because that's what yeah. happens every goddamn year. I'm going to be celebrating July 4th by cleaning a cat patio at the shelter. Okay, good. Yeah. That's better. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to scrub up cat poop and stuff. America! America! Uh, it gives the kitties independence to go outside. Another thing that's that's happening in the low country here, the low country of South Carolina, where I live, um, it's, it's mushroom season. Uh, I didn't know that was a thing. It's, it's a period of time where, where everything is hot and dank and moist, and mushrooms just start growing everywhere. And um, it's also that time when we, we take Loki out, and it's, oh, what you doing, buddy? What are you doing? What do you have in your mouth? What do you have in your mouth? Come over. What, what are you eating? I heard a rumor that Loki ate ant poison. He does. He didn't get to eat it. He just smelled it. It's like, oh, I want that. And I had to drag him that. Yeah, I have to. We, I have to police the yard for mushrooms and toadstools, because bless his heart, we love him. He's a wonderful dog, and he has the survival skills of a turnip. As as I understand it, dogs <laughs> will eat pretty much anything that doesn't escape them. Like I, to I think I told you my sister's dog right before Easter ate four bags of chocolate. And she had to induce vomiting in the dog and was just, she was like, I'm just glad I bought a lot of peppermint patties because at least it doesn't smell that bad. Because <laughs> she spent the night inducing vomiting in the dog, which apparently involves active peroxide, which I didn't know was different than regular peroxide. But she had to feed the dog peroxide and make him vomit, make her vomit in the driveway. Because dogs will just eat anything that doesn't escape them. Sometimes the the mushrooms escape Loki. How? Bless his heart. <laughs> he's a good dog. He is. He's a wonderful he's dog. A we love him. And he's also a little... Bless his heart. He's very handsome. He is. He is. He's a very handsome boy. We tell Peggy that a lot. Well, Peggy, you're very pretty. You're just you're just so pretty, Peggy. She's she's not the brightest light on the Christmas tree. Oh uh, yeah. But she's so pretty. Jiggly saying is saying, why are dogs even alive? I don't know how they've survived. Because we keep taking them to the vet, I think. Yeah. We keep getting whatever they ate today pumped out of them. Alright. Well, I will I will give you this. The dog actually got Sarah a job, so Nice. They they liked her. They liked the dog so much. The vet gave Sarah. No, not just because that, but he helped. Can't hurt. Yeah. I don't think I would get that deal at my vet. Mm. All right. Let's let's all get. My, all, all, two out of my three cats have the red dot on their file. Yes. The red dot. That means this cat will fuck <laughs> shit up. But I don't think I'm going to get a job there based on their charm. No. Uh, 
All right, let's get the intro going because we are way late tonight. Whoa, wow, well, we are. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs. Come on, come on, come on. Look for all, find all sorts of horrible things. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call crazy. What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And I'm crazy there's two levels to our first story this week. So um, the first is, oh my God. And the second is, what is wrong with you? Most of um, our stories fall into one of those two categories, if not both. Let's uh, let's let's get cranking here with the first part, which is, oh my god! And I put this on my Twitter because I couldn't contain myself, and a lot of people saw this. And oh my god, um, this is a thing that's happening. Hello, climate change. Um, yeah. Um, officials warn. Uh, warn officials warn of wasp super nests in Alabama. Seen this shit? Yeah. The fucking wasp Ewok City. Yep. Fuck that shit. Yeah. Colony can grow to be as big as a Volkswagen Beetle. Jesus. And can have 15,000 wasps. That's the oh my god part. Now, what, what's happening here and why I say hello climate change is normally yellow jacket wasps, they build their nest for a year. And then it gets cold, and they die. Except the queen, which has a natural antifreeze in their blood. So the queen survives and makes a new colony the next year. The problem is, it's not getting cold enough to kill them. So that one colony survives to the next year. And the next and they get way bigger than they're supposed to when they grow these giant... Now, where this comes into what is wrong with you territory, this, fo- this, this particular news story, New York Times, focuses on the story of one James Barron. Uh, he went to his smokehouse in southern Alabama to grab an axe. He was alarmed to see a giant wasp nest about seven feet wide extending along the wall it had been two months since he had last set foot inside they did that in two months um he immediately retreated later sprayed hornet killer on the nest with his son he said that just angered the yellow jackets uh he was stung 11 times now here's the part where i was like oh god oh god oh god um the end of the article. Uh, where is it? Mr. Baron still enters his smokehouse once or twice a week, creeping around the corner to access tools and fertilizer. Um, sometimes you just walk out there and they won't do anything. The next time you just leave as fast as you can because they're out there stinging. They're really dangerous and not predictable at all. Why haven't you killed them? Yeah, your smokehouse is theirs now. It be- are all your tools. This is when you call somebody, you call, like, the, the, the black ops people at Orkin. Yeah. They have the special division there. You call the them. They keep locked in a basement until they get the call on the red phone. It's like it's like you call whoever they called in, in Stranger Things. Yeah. To, to contain, the, 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 did the burn. You call those people. You know? Because... Why would you? I, I'm, I'm sorry. Speaking past the thousand wasps to get a hammer every now and then. <laughs> Don't mind me. Not here to fuck with you. Just need my hammer. He's got a kid. He's got like a grandson. What? It's our hammer now. I just did this. Oh my god. If this happened, look. Sarah, of the two of us, Sarah is the one more freaked out by Wasp. With every good med, I mean, I'm not as much. With every good reason, she's freaked out by them. But even of us both, if something this big was outside, I'd be like, nope, we're going to Red Roof. Yep, fuck we, all of that. We live there now. Until the Wasp, we are, we are not there. Loki, Grady, pack your shit. We're gone. 
Is it a coincidence that you just updated a file called Beekeeper? <laughs> <laughs> that is coincidence. We have a shared Dropbox account, so when he updates things, I see them come up on my screen. This is... Yeah, no. I, I might just abandon the house. Yeah, it's like, you know what? It was We had a good run, but... Uh, yeah, it's, it was a good house. Good house, yeah. But it's, it's time to go. Time to go. It's time to let it implode on itself like the end of Poltergeist. <laughs> that it's is the house now. Can you just look at this? Jesus Christ. Look oh, at that. that. And it's only going to get worse. No, oh, yeah. Because we're only fucking the planet more every day. Every year we don't have a freezing winter in the southeast. That's a year the wasp nest just gets bigger. And people are making. Eventually, Ohio is going to be beachfront property, and there will be whole areas that are uninhabitable because they've been taken over by the fucking wasps. People on on Twitter were joking about uh, you should take off, nuke it from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. You know what the fun funny part about that is? The alien is based on wasps. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, it's very. Insectine. Yeah, the, the whole concept behind them was based and on the queen, a kind of wasp. And yeah. yeah, it's it's irony. Anyway, also anyway. insects are more, as I understand it, more resilient to things like nuclear winter than we are. They are. They'll they, fucking survive. They, they it's don't. us that won't survive. Yeah. Dan would kit up and take on the wasps. Fuck that. <laughs> No. I lost a battle with poison ivy once. No. Uh uh-uh. uh. Next he up. Cut down, he cut down a possessed tree and was had poison ivy from knees to shoulder for like months. Uh next up we have uh we're going to Florida. Of course we're going to Florida. Of course we're going to Florida. What are we gonna do when Florida's underwater because climate change? They're going to go elsewhere. They're going to make new Floridas. It's gonna be like it's it's gonna be like little colonies that sprout like like you know how you step or on just move up the coast like the snakes that are you know. you, you know how you step on one of those puffer mushrooms and that big cloud comes out and it just makes other mushrooms. No, that's a thing. Never mind. Anyway, Florida. Um, this is one of those stories that was just made for us. Modern day hamburglar. Cooks burger at Wendy's in Florida, then steal safe. I mean, you don't want to steal a safe on an empty stomach. That's a lot of lifting. Deputies in a South Florida town are seeking a man they call, quote, modern day hamburger. After the man allegedly broke into a fast food restaurant, fired up the grill, and cooked himself a burger. The man also stole the restaurant's safe. Uh, now, this is the part of the story that I was just like, really? Really? You had to, well, actually, your own story? Despite the Hamburglar nickname associated with McDonald's hamburger chain, this brazen burglar actually broke into a Wendy's. He actually, well, actually himself. (laughs) Maybe that was a bitchy editor. Sheriff's office said the man used a brick to smash in the door, then turned on the oven to cook his own meal. He also tried to break into a restaurant in downtown Jensen. Man, how could you go to two places at once? Wendy's is very filling. Have you ever had it? Yes. You Wendy's that's a carb coma. That's you, that is you are sitting down, you are full of grease and meat. I usually stick to the chicken nuggets at Wendy's. I find their their buns too greasy. Oh, the baconator, it's so good but it's so bad. I don't know how the buns always greasy. It's, it's like so dip the whole thing in the deep fryer like I, The man the man also tried to break into a nearby gas station. I think he was very drunk, the manager of the gas station told the television station. I mean, obviously the Hamburglar did not take his breakup with Wendy well. Oh, come on now. And now he's just filled with angry incel rage. Why why is why is this happening now? Why why okay. Um just that is that is a sad place to be. Drunk, breaking into a Wendy's, cooking a burger, and then leaving with the safe. Yeah. 
That's not one of the high. I worked at a burger joint. I didn't know how to turn on the grill, and I worked there for five years. I didn't work the grill. I worked the counter. So, like, if you asked me to turn on the fucking grill at that place, I would have been like, I don't know how. I don't do that. Bob does that. So maybe it's a clue. I can make you surprised. Maybe it's a clue. Yeah, like, it's not like there's just a switch Mm. you can flip, like... He had insider knowledge that a simple drunkard could not possess. Watson, the game is afoot. We should, we should, we should start a detective business for the absurd. <laughs> Be like half Sherlock Holmes, half I Heart Huckabees. A little bit of Jessica Jones in there, because we swear a lot. Ah, uh, we do. <laughs> Speaking of some more swearing, <laughs> hey, okay. Oh God, it's Walmart. Ah, oh, <sighs> it's fucking Walmart. It's Walmart. It's Texas Walmart, but it's still Walmart. That should Wal- just be their slogan from now on. Fucking Walmart. <laughs> You're going to shop here anyway. Fuck you. I'm eating. Woman banned from Walmart after demanding half off price of cake she ate half of in store. No! <laughs> A woman who ate half a cake at a Walmart in Texas refused to pay for that half that was missing. It was barred from the store by police on Tuesday. Well, it's not missing. <clears throat> it's in your GI tract. <laughs> the unidentified woman entered the bakery section of the Walmart store in Wichita Falls and walked around the store as she ate half of the cake. When she went to the register... She claimed that half the cake was missing and refused to pay for the missing half. She wanted to pay half price for the baked good. So your story was, I came to Walmart and I found amongst all the baked goods, this cake that somebody ate half of. And I thought, I'll buy that half eaten cake because they'll give me a discount. That's the story you're running with. That's what you think people are going to fucking believe. So, so she came in that she ruined something. Yeah. And then tried to profit off it. Why isn't she in the Trump administration? Right? She probably will be by next week. I also, I'm not, I don't like the thing where people like eat something in the store and then pay for it. What? Like, okay. like pick up a candy bar, eat it, and then just have them scan the wrapper. I think that's fucked up. Like, When I used to go grocery shopping with my mom, I would ask her, like, oh, can I have my treat now? She'd say, no, it's not ours yet. It's not ours until we've paid for it. Like, there's not fucking credit. (laughs) Well, sometimes, all right. There's a fucking problem with that. I think it's tacky. Do you know, there's a big controversy about groceries. Uh, There's, like, two sorts of people. When you're shopping for groceries, especially produce, there's, like, grazers and non-grazers. There's people who fucking eat the grapes and shit. Well, there you go. Okay, I do that. That's wrong. No, I will sample like one grape. That's not okay. I will sample it to see if it's if it's like, are these good grapes? And if they are, I'll buy them. And if not, I'm sorry. But if you don't buy them, do you think somebody else wants to buy the grapes that you've had your grubby mitts all over? I had a grape. It's right, a sample. You, you cannot pick one grape off a bunch without touching the other grapes. Yes, you can. It's possible. You no, just, you can't. You pick up the grape and you shake it until the rest of them fall off. I've done it. It's not right. Dry I mean, land is not a myth. I've seen it. And, okay, here we go. Here's the argument. That's theft. Of a grape. It is, but that's not... I just think it's fucking tacky. And I think the next person doesn't know that someone's had their paw. Because even if you're exceedingly careful and go in like a fucking CSI to get that grape without fucking up the rest of the bunch, I promise you nobody else does. Tara, it's a grocery store. Everyone has touched the damn produce before you do. That's why you wash it when you get home. I'm just saying it's fruit. Like, my treat at the grocery store used to be, because we we went to such a small grocery store that they knew us, that the deli counter would always, like, give me a slice of bologna or ham to eat while we walked around the store. Ronin's of the channel is like, price check for a single grape. <laughs> Come on. 
Yes, you should wash the produce before eating it anyway. And yes, I do that. Because uh. that's the other reason you don't eat it in the store. Because that's fucking gross. Because other people have pawed at it. And it's been sprayed with pesticides. And Josh is pointing out, they're throwing out half the grapes anyway. But the point here is, cake is not grapes. Yeah. Cake is not grapes. Because... Yeah. It's not, it's, it's a fucking cake. You can't wash the cake off. Terror That's not an entitled white lady. Because I think you should pay for things before you take them. That's entitled. That seems like the opposite of that. Okay. Look, we have just have different philosophies about this. We can both live in the same world with, with different great philosophies. I guess. But people do it with like a soda or a candy bar. Like people no, walk around that's... fucking Target with a soda they took out of the cooler and then be like, here, I drank this while I was shopping. Well, fuck you. There's a cafe in the Target. Buy a fountain soda. Yeah, I mean, don't wander around just snacking it. That that's that's grody. If you're just wandering around with like a candy bar and shit, and because you know half the time they'll forget to pay, eat. I have seen wrappers and oh, cups. Yeah. Yeah, they forget. I've seen. I I don't know. I what was that? I saw a milkshake cup in the freezer at fucking the grocery store once. <sighs> but yeah, either way, you can't do this with a fucking cake and then try to not pay for it. I, I love at the end when I worked at Old Navy, I would have chicks with like a full face beat go in and try on a white T-shirt and then come out and be like, "Um, this has makeup on it. I want a discount." And I'm like, really? Because this lipstick on the collar of that shirt matches what's on your janky face. That's your makeup. Fuck you. I do want to point out at the end of this story, uh, we get a little callback. In January, a Walmart Wichita Falls asked officers to ban a woman who had been drinking wine from a Pringles can. For several hours, she drove around in the store's parking lot. We did that story. Oh, uh, yeah, an electric car. Memories! Ah. Uh. Misty, watercolored Pringles can memories. Like corners of my mind. Uh, next up, oh God. I have never seen this series of words put together before. This is a first. At least for me. Maybe someone else has. And if you have, you've had a much more interesting life than I have. Um, Sheboygan Cereal Toilet... Cereal Toilet... Clogger. Sentenced to 150 days in jail probation. Is that a crime? A 26-year-old Sheboygan man was sentenced Monday to three years of probation for clogging women's toilets in Deland Park and at his place of work. Patrick D. Beeman, who was originally charged with 12 misdemeanors of criminal damage to property, but seven of the charges were dismissed, um, as conditions of probation... Demon will have to serve 150 days in jail, pay more than 5,500 restitution, not be allowed to possess or consume alcohol or any consult controlled substance. Um, let's see. Uh, according to the criminal complaint, officers found a toilet in the women's bathroom at Dealing Community Center clogged with a plastic bottle last March. Water was overflowing from the toilet. Officers checked the restrooms the previous evening and the toilets were not damaged. Officers reviewed 10 similar incidents beginning in April 2017 where toilets were clogged. The city determined each incident caused about 200 in damage, $200. Officers were able to identify Beeman after speaking with the manager of a temp agency where Beeman worked. Who said Beeman damaged toilets at a company where he was placed by the agency? He was only employed there for about a month. The manager said Beeman was placed at another company where incidents of a similar nature began to happen. Is this a kink? Is this a kink I don't know about? What the hell is happening? And see, when it said serial toilet clogger, I was thinking someone with, like, digestive issues. And I'm like, you can't put someone in jail for that. It's not their fault. No, no, this is some deliberate shit. Yeah, I didn't realize he was shoving well, bottles down there. That's different. That's vandalism. What? But like, what? is this... Is this some weird fetish? I don't know! Happened? Why? 
of you all the fucking. of all the things to do. You're a grown man. Is this your chosen hobby? You know, the last time I did something like this, I was six. I don't think I've ever purposely clogged a toilet. Oh, you've never. When I was a little kid, I don't actually remember it. My parents told me about it. When I was a little kid, apparently I put an entire roll of toilet paper down the toilet. And he, here's how I did it. I took the to the roll and I fed it into the toilet. So I could, while when I flushed the toilet, I could watch the roll on spool. So you're a kitten. <laughs> yeah. When I was, my parents were not happy. We're not, we're not, we're not pleased about this. No. Oh. Yeah, I don't think I ever, I never saw the toilet as a toy. But I was six at the time. I wasn't yeah. working a job. Right. In the middle of the night and decided, ooh, a toilet. What can I throw in there? My my theory is, if this is a place with more than one bathroom, my theory is he purposely clogged one woman's bathroom to force to force all the women into the other one where he had a fucking camera or something. Except no. That that would actually no. See, that would make sense. That would be it would that, be horrible, but that'd it would be horrible. It makes sense. This is just a dude who, out of nowhere, is like, "Well, time to clog the toilets." Why? Why is that your compulsion? And we, we, we he's got ten incidents at this one place. We don't know how many times he did it at other places. What the fuck? Why do this? And as I understand it, most men have this power without using a bottle. Anyone, Tara, anyone could have this power. It's called yes, white but, it's called White Castle. Yes, but men come by it more naturally. <laughs> <laughs> and I noticed that neither of you are arguing with me. <laughs> We're not. But I think I'm right. Uh well, let's move on to our next one. Now before we start the story, I want to make absolutely clear I am not shaming porn. Okay? If that's a thing you do, okay. However, I dot, exchange dot, skincare dot. tips with a porn star on Twitter. What? I exchange skincare tips with a porn star on Twitter. Okay. Yeah. But dot dot dot. And I love telling people that. Time and a place. El Campo High substitute teacher fired for filming porn in classroom. Yeah, that's not okay. Former substitute teacher fired for allegedly filming pornographic material inside a classroom. Also lost her job at a liquor store. Uh, El Campo uh, told ISD told ABC's sister station, ABC 13, that the teacher was let go in connection to, with, quote, improper criminal incident. Um, substitute was employed for three months. School used the state system to vet the employee. Um... The school official confirmed the teacher produced porn in a classroom and a workroom last month. School says no teacher students were involved. Oh, that's good. Yeah. But regardless, um, this isn't Zach and Miri make a porno, okay? No. Or is it the girl next door? No. Where your porn star girlfriend is going to help you film the new sex ed video during prom. No. Because that's how that movie ends. No, that's, that's not... This, you you have to. Th there's there's a line of demarcation there, okay. Yeah. And like um, I know schoolgirl porn's a thing. I get it, but you're just gonna have to figure out a different way to do that. Listen, I have made videos on a shoestring. Yeah. You can put together a convincing looking set. I've got a freaking castle wall made of styrofoam over here. Yeah. You, you can do it for pennies on the dollar. You don't have to actually go to a classroom. No. Nor should you. No. Yeah, the people teenagers in the channel. Are gross. People and in the you don't want to rub your dick on anything teenagers have touched, okay? That is true. I didn't even consider that. Right? Think about, do you actually want to rub your genitals on any surface in a regular high school? We have... You don't. Teenagers have so many secretions. Yeah. 
And I'm not just talking about like you know the 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 the, uh, the, the sexy type secretions. I'm talking about shit comes out your pores. Both my sisters complain about my nephews having reached teenage years because of the teenage boy smell. They, yeah, it's There's nothing oh. you can do about it. Like it's not really their fault. They no, just, teenage boys stink. We do. Like you can't even help it. You sweat constantly. You don't want to be. You don't want to be there. You want it all to be over as quickly as possible because it's horrible. Yeah. Oh, and that, they're also talking about the <laughs> chewed up ancient gum on your dick. Right? If you've gone to school, I know this is an American thing. Presumably it's a thing all over the world. If you've ever gone to school, don't look under the desk. Just spare yourself. Have you ever made the mistake of absentmindedly, like, sweeping your hand under the desk? <sighs> And it feels like a rock garden, but it's not. I've made that mistake because I'm fidgety. No, don't look under there. Out of sight, out of mind. Because, yeah. me, um, don't put you. Yeah. So, look, you can make a porn. That's okay. That's do legal. Porn. That's fine. That's healthy. It's normal. It's legal. You can do that. Well, it's legal if you don't do it in a high school. Yes, because that you, it's and this you know what this applies to any kind of video. I, YouTubers, pay attention. You can't just go into a place and start filming because you feel like no. you should. Yeah. You gotta ask. Yeah. It's called private property for a reason. You can't just do shit. I that, that that's something that I YouTube is. Once again, YouTube's doing terrible things. Hi, YouTube. We're on YouTube. Um, it's breaking down these barriers about ex just some accepted social norms. Like, for one, you don't just go filming in places. You this is okay. I can do this. Bodies hanging from trees in the suicide forest, for instance. I mean, all the fuck. There's a reason why places sell you permits to shoot at a place. Because they own it. Because it's theirs. You don't do horrible things to your children and call them pranks. Uh. We have one last one tonight. Um, There are self owns. And there are self owns. And then there is this kind of own. Because wow. Woman's own home security camera allegedly captures her firebombing neighbor's home. Amazing. Oklahoma woman has been charged with second-degree arson after allegedly firebombing her neighbor's home in an incident that appeared to be captured on her own security camera. Footage allegedly shows her firing gunshots into the neighboring home before firebombing the property. Fire department wow. was called to the address of a condemned home on June 10th after receiving numerous calls about a house fire. While firefighters were on the scene, witnesses reporting an ongoing conflict between the neighbors. Andy Dunham, the woman pictured in the video, uh, consented to the examination of her own security footage. Wait, what? Which appeared to show the alleged incident. Investigators alleged Dunham fi fired two shots into the house before tossing a lit towel inside. She was That's arrested. not how you make a Molotov cocktail. No. No. Okay. What? Why did she... Why did you give them the footage? Why did you do this, I think, is the more pertinent question. Well, yeah, okay. We'll get to there. But like, It's bad enough your neighbor's living in a condemned house. That yeah. fucking sucks. But... You don't need to try and burn it down. This is America, however. And we have one of those pesky amendments. It's the fifth one. Um, where you in the second? Well, so, yeah, second, but the the fifth one, where uh, you have the right against self incrimination. Yeah, which means you could not give them that. You could just yeah, if you want to get a court order, that's you how that works. The option to not give them the video of you committing arson. Right. They 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 have to get an or they have to. But no, sure, you can watch it. No, why did you do that? 
I mean, maybe she didn't think it was angled that direction. <laughs> oh. They should put that in the next ring ad. Also, I have had problems with neighbors in the past. Even good neighbors, I've had problems. And you have a neighbor that wanted to murder you? You. When? I don't know. You said you had a downstairs neighbor that kept threatening to murder oh, you. Oh, no, upstairs neighbor. Okay. Yeah, he was insane. Wait, how did you forget that, Dan? I know, right? What? What what neighbor are you talking about? Oh, that neighbor, that one, yeah, him. That's the neighbor that wanted to. I don't know. He's he's very. I don't know that he wanted to murder me, but he was fucking insane and spent his time yelling at me and stomping on the his floor, my ceiling, so bad it rattled the the light fixtures. Dan's getting up there in years, guys. <laughs> I've had problems with my neighbors before. I've been angry with my neighbors before, but I've never thought, you know what? I'll handle this with fire. That's a good plan. Oh. That's that's how we're going to deal with this neighborhood dispute. That would really that I mean I, I really don't want to read this lady's next door for for her neighborhood right now. No, because that that probably isn't coming off too well. Also, can I point out that next door is probably one of the worst ideas we've ever had as a species? It really is. <laughs> like I have it. In my neighborhood, surprisingly, because it's a bunch of white Trump voters where I live, surprisingly is mostly about lost pets and recommending a good landscaper. But every now and then you get that, like, suspicious per person walking down such and such road. Here's a picture. And it's just a fucking teenager in a hoodie. It's it's one of the it's, it's like Twitter is bad enough, but you have distance. You don't know if any of those people live near you. It's like having Twitter, but confirmation they're all nearby. Next door is, yeah, these are the people in your neighborhood, and they fucking suck. Yeah. Learn which of your neighbors is racist. Door, yeah. Next door is a social media app based around where you live. Yeah. The whole point of it is it's based around for you to meet people in your community, or if you've lost your pet, you post it to next door, and the people that live around you can look for your pet. That's the intent. Or, like, for you to get to know your neighbors, really, it's used for awfulness. And you, you know what's insidious about it? <clears throat> they don't just, they don't advertise it. How I, they sent, they sent us in the mail what looked like a hand printed, well, like a, a, someone who printed out their own letter saying, hey, we're starting up a next door thing. We're your neighbors. You want to join? Here's a URL. You can go do this. Like someone in the community mailed it to me. Oh, gross. It is, isn't it? Like, it's like that, it's guerrilla marketing. No, it isn't. That's fucking you. Yeah, like Facebook is which one of your high school friends is a horrible fucking racist. Next door is how many horrible fucking racists live on your street. Ugh. <sighs> But the first thing we learned this week is um, don't handle your neighbors with fire. That's uh, no, no, and especially don't do it while you're on fucking video, you idiot. Yeah, I, that's that's a special kind of something. Um, we've learned that many people in America work two jobs, but you have to learn to compartmentalize a little bit with some of those. They 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 don't. This was a substitute teacher who worked at a liquor store and was doing porn. Like, I don't have a problem with liquor or porn, but maybe teaching isn't the third career for you. <laughs> parents no, really no, you mean, about that stuff. No, I, I, you know what? She, she's got every right to be a teacher. There, she, does. she does. She does. But the PTA is going to just like run you out of town on a rail and burn you at the stake. Because American parents are not cool. Uh, this. We've learned there's such a thing as a serial toilet clogger and not the way you thought. Yeah. we That is a genuinely, we learned something new. I know. I really want to know if that's a kink. I look forward to the YouTube comment. Uh, God damn it. You can, I won't. Um, yeah, you don't read them anyway. We've learned. So that I can yell at them on Twitter. We've learned that, um, we, we've learned that Tara and I have very different philosophies when it comes to grazing. Yeah. 
And also that, you know, Meat grapes and unwashed food. Grapes and cake are two very different things. Yeah. Uh we've learned that <laughs> if you get the, oh, we've learned there's an actual hamburger. There's this somebody how do you do that? He's got a score to send it with Wendy. How did, because of fucking Hamburg. And finally, we've learned. I feel like you should at least wear the outfit if you're going to do that. Yeah, you know, just put, put a little effort into it. Don't just, not a tank top. Come on, really? What are you, the gritty reboot? Come on. Yeah. And it's Zack Snyder Hamburglar. And finally, we've learned. It's it's the wasps. The, the wasps own us now. They 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 have they're they're getting property. Um, we're gonna have a wasp president in like eight years. Yeah, we we've we've had like it's 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 they're taking out mortgages. Yeah, you know it's they're it's, stealing our tools. How do you Why just I live up here? Jesus. What? why i live up here where shit freezes and eventually that's gonna stop and i'm gonna be pissed how do you stay with oh my god how could you stay in that house it's an old southern dude like old southern dudes as i understand it will just shrug at almost anything well gotta get a hammer gotta walk past the wasps like, you know, now I'm now you're thinking about it. I remember when half the tree fell down in my driveway and it made this big, loud noise. And I didn't get up for two seconds because I was like, man, do I have to put pants on? Shit. But like really old dudes from the South, I feel like their reaction to most things is, well. Oh, fucking wasps! Uh, the worst God, wasps are proof that God does not like us. Yeah, wasps are. If fuck you was an animal, 